Hello, welcome to this video and in this video I'm going to be teaching you about software defined networks. So what are software defined networks? Now before we talk of the software defined networks themselves, let's look at the background of networks. Now generally with our networks we have a bunch of devices that are configured and with these devices when you're configuring each one of them you have to go to each device for configuration. Now this can be a pain, especially when you have hundreds and hundreds of devices in your network. So with software defined networking now, we are trying to find a way to beat this problem of number one, having many devices, and number two, scanning, number three, increased control. Now, when we talk of increased control, we're saying we want to be able to quickly be able to reconfigure our network as and when we want to do, to do so. And that's where software-defined networks come into play. So with software-defined networks, what we have is a situation where we are now trying to separate the control of the network from all the devices and centralizing it into one or just a few devices. So what we end up having is what can be called the control plane and the data plane. So when we have these two planes, in the control plane, that's where we have the devices that are going to have all the controls, all the configurations for the network. Now, when you configure on these devices, the configurations will then be propagated to the various packet forwarding devices on the data plane. So the data plane no longer has uh, the brains, so to speak, of the network. The brains now lie here on the control plane. So the control plane now, instead of having to move from one device to another, and we have 50 of them, all we now have to do is to have one device, and for redundancy, we'll put it in a cluster, and then within that one device, we make all our, our configurations and all our definitions for the network. And those definitions control what will then be forwarded to these packet forwarding devices. So these packet forwarding devices no longer have the power to root, no longer have the power to switch. All they have to do is to do exactly what they've been told by the control plane devices. Now the device on the control plane communicates with these devices using one of the protocols, which is OpenFlow. So OpenFlow is the uh, protocol, the communication protocol between the device that controls the whole network and the devices that are controlled by that one device. So as a network administrator, now you don't have to jump from one device to another to configure it. But all you have to do is to just have one management interface and with this interface, you gain complete control over the whole network. So why would we want to have um, software-defined networks? Now, some of the advantages to that is that software-defined networks are programmable. So unlike the old where we have got set uh, configurations that we have to do uh, based on the OS or on the device that you're configuring, with software-defined network now, you can program as if you're creating some software and then you can put exactly what you want your network to be running like. So in terms of things like quality of service, things like um, congestion control, you will now be able to actually be able to determine from the control plane exactly what you want. So now instead of having to configure all these devices for that, you only do it in one place. The other advantages of having um, software-defined networks is that they allow you to innovate a lot in your network because now you are able to do things that are not just standard, but things that you really feel you want to do because you've got a programmable control interface that you can set according to the exact needs you have beyond just switching and routing. You also have this layered architecture. So with this layered architecture, you can easily control your network knowing that it's just a control plane. So probably this is where you put some redundancy to make sure that you don't lose your control plane, your control devices. And then you also just have some commodity or cheap devices that you can use to be, to be your packet for the devices. And as I've said, this helps you reduce your CAPEX as well and your OPEX. Because now, instead of having many administrators, 
we should configure all the devices. You can have a few, we'll be just running a few control devices on your network. In CapEx, you don't longer have to buy the hardware and uh, the software couple together, which usually increases the cost of those devices and um, those network functions. But now all you have to do is to just buy some cheap hardware, which will only play the role of forwarding the packets to where it's supposed to go. Also, this allows for vendor neutrality. So now, because of that, you can now have many people developing these products and coming up with various solutions that increases the number of um, options that you have on your network. You also have the option of dynamic configuration. So now, instead of having to um, define things uh, over time or over a long period of time, because you have to do it for the whole network and on each device, you can now only do it on this device and you can configure and have all those changes uh, propagated and implemented uh, in a very short space of time. So in the old way of doing things, you'll find that you would have to configure all the settings on all your routers and all your switches, right? But now you just have to go on your control plane and with one command, you can have everything be uh, reconfigured as you want it to be. So you don't have to do anything to any other device because this is the only device that is with the operating system for the whole network. Every other device just listens to that. So this helps in reducing your downtime, in enforcing your policies because there's one central point, and also in provisioning of new devices because all these devices do not need any extra configurations. But in the data plane, all you have to do is get the device, um, maybe give it an IP and get it ready for work. You can also micro-segment your network. So with software-defined networks, what they allow is they are sort of allowing you to go beyond just routing and switching but now they are allowing you to go into to go into issues to do with quality of service and um, congestion control and the like so with quality of service now you can actually say you know what i want my uh, video traffic to now move this way and instead of having a separate function for that and instead of having to do it on many devices you now do it on just one device which tells all these other devices, how it wants traffic to be forwarded based on the definitions that you've come up with in the control plane. So that's basically all about uh, software-defined networking in a nutshell, but there's also something that works together with software-defined networks. And this thing is network function virtualization. Now, so the reason why I would want us to address network function virtualization whilst also talking about software-defined networking is because we need to clarify the difference between the two. Because there are times when they may seem like it's one and the same thing, but in actual fact, they're different. So what is network function virtualization? So network function virtualization is basically separating the hardware from the software for our network functions. Now, by network functions, we mean things like our uh, firewalls, our routers, our switches, and any other network function that we have or that you have in your network. So, when we're separating the hardware and the software, what we're saying now is we are now allowing us to just buy the software which we can then deploy on any hardware that we want. So we can buy a software from vendor A, gives us software, then we can buy the hardware from vendor B, and then we deploy that software on the hardware on vendor, for vendor B. Now you'll find that today most of the hardware and the software come packaged together already, you can't separate them, and that increases the cost of actually acquiring some of these devices. But now we're saying, instead of actually having this setup, where everything is bundled together, we want to separate it so that we can deploy that network function on any hardware that we want and in any way. So we are now moving to a um, to a time of virtualized services. So just like we virtualize um, our servers and virtualize the applications of those servers, now we also want to virtualize our routers, our switches, our files, and get them to also run just as they do. Uh, and get them to run the same way as um, our virtual machines for our various applications. So that's network function virtualization. 
So with the network function visualization, we are focusing on the network functions. Let's let the clear. And is the virtualization of the network function. Is the virtualization of our network functions. That's network function virtualization. So what's the difference between network function virtualization and software defined network? Okay, so let's look at the two and see how they differ. So we have got our software defined network and we have got network function virtualization. So with software defined networking, we are looking at controlling the whole network. So what we are doing is we are changing how uh, the way in which we control our networks and we are making sure now that we have got one central device uh, controlling all the other devices on the network. Now with network function virtualization, all we are doing is just virtualizing our network functions, which could be our routers, switches, etc. So what we are simply doing is we are maintaining the old way of configuring our network. We are not moving to the software-defined way of doing it. But now, instead of having our hardware coupled with our software, we are now separating the two and allowing our network functions, which a router, a switcher, a firewall, or whatever else you use, to now be deployed as a virtualized service in your virtual environment. And that will help you now to separate the hardware and the software and make sure that your network function just functions like the rest of your applications in the environment. We also, so you find that with uh, software defined networking and network function virtualization, they work together. Okay, so they kind of work together. Software defined networking does not need network function virtualization. Network function virtualization does not need software defined networking. But the two can actually work together, they can complement together. So when you're implementing the software defined networking, you can actually use virtualized um, network functions or virtualized. Uh, central devices in, in the control plane or in the data plane to be able to control uh, your various functions in the network. That's basically the main difference between these two. This one is aiming to redefine how we control our own network, whereas this one is simply saying let's separate the hardware and the software and then we just virtualize them, but we maintain this old way of doing our work. So basically that's all I have for you for network function virtualization and on software defined networks. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please keep watching and I'll produce more videos every week. And I hope they're helpful to you and you'll be able to uh, gain more technical knowledge on your IT infrastructure. Please leave any comments below if you have anything else you want to add. Thank you very much.